it's part of this, like, ongoing thing of people yes. saying, like, we gotta, we gotta give him a, got we gotta it. give President-elect Trump a chance, and, and we gotta give him a fresh start, and, you know, he's, he's our president-elect now, and, and we all gotta make peace with that. And one, you made the point that Dave Chappelle did follow it up with, and we're going to be watching you, we're going to hold you to that, which, sure, yes, I would hope that that would be the assumption, is that we're going to hold a president accountable, especially an extraordinarily problematic yeah. president, but I just, I, I fundamentally don't like... I was about to say don't understand, but I think I do understand what just give him a chance means, and I don't like it. it I, I, in the context it keeps coming up in, I don't know what the alternative could possibly be portrayed as being reasonably that's not uh, casting just give him a chance as people calling for complacency. And that that really rubs me the wrong way. I don't think that many liberals right now, in all seriousness, are actually considering armed revolt, which is the only alternative I can think of that makes, let's just give him a chance, a reasonable <laughs> thing to say. Other than that, it just seems like, hey, sit back and see what happens, which I absolutely don't think we can afford to do. Well, I mean... I think, like, first of all, I'm pretty sure that monologue was written, like, fucking the day after the election, you know? Like, maybe even while the fucking, the, the, the votes were coming in. But, uh, second of all, like, any chance, like, that, any chance that might have been afforded was surely blown, <laughs> basically Bannon. immediately. <laughs> fucking Bannon. Like... God damn it. Literally every pick so far is like, how can we fuck this up <laughs> just even worse? Like, let's put a climate change denier as head of the EPA. Let's put a white supremacist as chief strategist. Let's like, let's just throw Newt Gingrich in there. Why not? People like him, right? I do, I, I did, uh, I think that was the 08 election when Gingrich was like, elect me. Moon base. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, I think that was 2012 because I recall Mitt Romney saying, like, one of the ways that he fucking just destroyed him in a debate was, like, if someone came up to me and told me they wanted to be a moon base, I'd fire them. <laughs> like, you, just, you can't do that. <laughs> I mean, I do... Okay, so this, this, is, this is a weird joke for me. Yeah. Because I think Gingrich is a joke. Yeah. But I do want a moon base. I want a moon base, but like... I, if I, I thought he was competent at all, if I thought in the slightest iota he knew what he was talking about and could fo follow that up, that would actually be a plus for me in the Gingrich column. You know, space exploration is really important to me. It's like my number four or five issue. It's definitely top ten. Yeah. Um, and And I feel like we've been really... Lacking on it in in the last couple of decades. I and agree. I, it's just and, a... and the point I always like to make is like, yeah, all these space goals seem fantastical. A moon base is ridiculous. Putting people on Mars is ridiculous. But in 1961, putting a man on the moon was ridiculous, and we just fucking did it. Well, the thing is, is that like the moon base specifically is the thing because like space travel is great and we need it, but Mars has to be the goal right now. Like. A moon base doesn't really give us anything, except, like, until we have other space travel readily available, you know? Like, there's, you can't terraform think, the moon. I think that's an oversimplification. I don't think... Uh, like... You can't terraform the moon, that's correct. But the, from, from perspectives other than the inability to terraform it, in a lot of ways, the moon is a much more inhospitable and difficult place to create a sustained, even closed environment. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't think a moon base should be our top priority. I agree that Mars should be our top priority, but the moon, to me, kind of feels like a, if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere <laughs> kind of situation. Like, it's not going to be a good testing ground for terraforming, because 
There's fucking nothing to terraform. It's it doesn't have dust my circling our planet. But if you can create a, a self-sustaining, long-term functioning moon base, then you can put humans down basically anywhere that has a surface. I mean, sure, that's true, but then, that like, you can create those conditions where it's like, yeah, nothing will fucking survive on Earth. No. Yeah, good. Earth, Earth doesn't have an equivalent to moon dust. I guess that's true. Which is, uh, as, as my understanding, the fines. it's the number one yeah. uh, difficulty in long-term survival. But, like, hypothetically, if we and really... Is problem, and is a problem we're going to run into a lot in space yes, is places Mars, that no don't have wind. Yeah. So all of the particles are just 9,000 times more dangerous than anything we evolved to deal with. Well, it's, a, it's like, not even just that, but, like... The, the particles are so small that, like, uh, even a spacesuit will, like, not keep them out, you know? Yeah. It's, but, I was saying, like... So I, th- I, 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 I think so we can yes, generate, we can, like, a we can't, fucking... Like, I don't think we can effectively colonize the moon, certainly not on any kind of time scale that will actually be meaningful or helpful to anyone that any of us... Like, it's generations and generations and generations away from that possibly being of any use to mankind. But I do think the moon could serve as a much closer test bed for technologies and methods that could potentially help us elsewhere. Even Mars. Yeah. But, I don't know. I, I think, like, the moon part of it might, like, just, just it, might, it might be wasted kind of in terms of the budget. Maybe, but I think we should be spending all of our GDP on... Oh, yeah. NASA's completely underfunded. Climate change space exploration. Um, in that order. <laughs> but... Yeah. Uh, but, all things said, space is the place. But anyway, I had a thing to say about Trevor Noah in, the, in that Dave chappelle kind of vein, where, like, after the election, he was like... Beware anti-Trump supporters, or else you'll become the thing you hate. And it's like, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if you could become the thing you hate. Like, I don't think protests are equivalent here, you know? Like, it's, it's one of those things where people say, like, Oh, you're intolerant of intolerance? Aren't you the intolerant one? And it's like, no, I'm not. That's not how that works. These things are not equivalent. That's not what I got it. I, uh, I I think I remember the the monologue you're talking about, um, I th- and I just got out of it that he was calling peaceful protests. Which yeah, we but I think that's have like not successfully done. As I think that is group, the majority of them have been peaceful, but not the totality of them. I think that is like an, a conversation that doesn't have a place here because, uh, you know, what was it JFK? Who said those who prevent peaceful revolution make violent revolution inevitable? Like, ain't the fault of the protesters if shit gets bad. The protesters are not the ones who created the conditions for which violence arises, you know? Like, they, they, didn't, they didn't do that shit. I'm not sure I agree with that as a hard and fast rule. And I mean, MLK also says, like, you know, a riot... I can't condemn riots without condemning the conditions that created them. Sure. A riot is the voice of the oppressed. Sure. Like, I don't know. I, it's like it, it's it's just framing the conversation in a way that I don't think is helpful and, and seems kind of like counterproductive. Was that from? Was that from? Oh man, I've been watching so much shit this past week, and it's all running together for me. And also, I'm drunk. Yeah. But wasn't that from Chappelle's monologue though, of like watching a bunch of white people riot in Oregon? Is that not from Chappelle's monologue? Did I see that somewhere else instead? Uh, I think he might have mentioned it, but I, I don't know what line specifically you're referring to. Uh, uh, oh, no, it totally was Chappelle, because the joke he made was that every black person in America watching that went, Psh, amateurs. <laughs> Hell yeah, but like, what he's saying there is that, like, yeah, shit's bad. That's what happens when shit's bad. And now you get shit's it. Shit's bad, but it was a bunch of white people writing, not because they're oppressed... But just because they're upset. Like, white people as a demographic elected Trump. And then also as a demographic in some places turned around and rioted about him. And that's 
kind of silly. I have a lot of friends who went to uh, protests the night of and the day after and the day after that and the day after that, and I am very proud of them. I think it...